All right. Good morning and welcome to today's 5 for 5 devotion. Our family is on a road trip this morning. We're going all over the place. We'll be staying the night in four different states in the span of one week. And last night we were at a hotel in Columbia, South Carolina. And I went to the store while my family was back at the hotel room and then I went to pick up something to eat. And I did something that angered my wife a little bit. It wasn't really smart and you don't have to send me any emails or texts about it because Amber has already given me a big lecture. But while I was leaving the store to go get something to eat for the family, there was a man standing on the side of the road. Uh, He didn't have a t-shirt on or anything. You could tell he was homeless. And he waved at me and I made eye contact with him. He started walking to the car and so immediately I'm thinking, all right, let me get my wallet out, give him some money. How much money should I give him? And so I crack open the window and I said, hey, and he goes, hey man, I'm just looking for a ride. Where are you going? And I was like, well, I'm just going across the street over here. And he goes, that's perfect. And so I let the guy <laughs> jump in the car, the stranger, and I gave him a ride. And then I took him, you know, kind of back behind some place where he was staying. He told me a story which was that he had been in Columbia for six months. He had gotten robbed and was basically stuck there. And he was living and sleeping basically up in a tree so nobody else would rob him. And I started to feel bad for him. I said, oh man, I'm sorry to hear this. And he said, no, 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 don't, don't feel bad for me. It's been the most awesome thing ever. God is really using me. I'm gonna share more with you about our conversation in just a moment. But this poor guy, you know, he's been kind of casted out. He told me that nobody Hardly ever gives him a ride or speaks to him because of the way he looks. People think he's crazy because he talks about God a lot. Well, it reminded me of this story in 2 Kings chapter 7 where Elisha was a prophet who was ministering uh, to an area in Samaria. This area had been through a really bad famine. And there were these four men who had a skin disease. And, you know, basically they're kind of the outcast of society. There was nothing for them to eat. They felt like they were going to die. Well, there was an enemy approaching and they decided, you know what, let's just go to the enemy camp and see if they'll take us in. Maybe they've got some food for us. If they don't take us in and they'd kill us, oh well, we're going to die anyway because there's no food here. As they approached the enemy camp, they didn't know this, but I guess the night before God had sent a huge noise of like chariots and army and stuff to scare this Armenian enemy away. And the enemy got up and left the camp and left their donkeys and horses behind, left behind their food and their gold and silver. So when these men who had the skin disease showed up, they were like, wow, look at all this stuff. Every tent they went into had food and, and gold and silver. I mean, it was just great. Well, after a little while, they started to feel convicted about it and they didn't want to get in any trouble either. But under their conviction, in 2 Kings 7, verse 9, they said, This is a day of good news, and we are keeping it to ourselves. I thought, wow, how powerful is that? You know, here these men are. They've been outcasted. They've got this good news. They can just keep it to themselves. You know, nobody's ever treated them right, probably, because of their skin disease. But they start thinking about other people and how they want to share this good news back with their city because they knew the people needed it. Well, back to my story. This man that I picked up, he never asked me for anything. He never asked me for money. All he wanted was a ride because he was hot and tired. He never asked me to buy him any clothes. He never asked me to purchase some food. He didn't ask for a night at a hotel room, nothing like that. In fact, I didn't give him anything. I just gave him a ride, just a short distance. The only thing he wanted from me was to know if I believed in Jesus. He wanted to share that good news. He wouldn't let me feel bad about him and his situation. He felt like God was using it. He wouldn't let me give him anything. He just wanted to know if I was a believer. And so I told him, you know, what I did for a living. And of course, he was excited about it. But wow, just think about that right now. How many people out there right now feel outcasted, feel like there's nothing out there for them? Maybe they don't have much. And just to give them that good news... And then to see people who don't have much, and when they get the good news, they're so excited they just want to share it with others. 
So, hey, you and I, if you're watching this, we've been very blessed. If we've got good news, let's not keep it to ourselves. Let's share it with everyone we meet. And if that's all we have, it's just good news, man, what's better than that? Because one day we've got riches stored up for us in heaven, and we're all going to be so blessed. Let's share it with as many people as we can. All right, I guess hope you guys have a great week, and I can't wait to see you all again soon. See ya.